Hello and welcome to the Monday, April 10th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Orlando, Florida. I'm here in Orlando, of course, at the Sands Conference uh, teaching intrusion detection. Well, if you missed me here at uh, this conference, I'll actually uh, be in San Diego, second week of May, uh, teaching the Defending Web Application class and also my two-day IPv6 class if you're interested in that. But well, uh, let's uh, dive into security news and let's start with an article that Didier posted about how prevalent malicious sites are among Alexa's top 1 million sites. Actually, Didier looked at uh, two different lists, Alexa and Umbrella, both lists that are commonly used as whitelists because you don't want to lock your users out of popular sites. Well, I mentioned it before, often popular sites are also used for malicious purposes. In particular, sites that do allow user content can easily be abused as command and control channels. No easy solution here for the defender, but in general, don't trust whitelists or blacklists blindly. Often they do require a more detailed review. And apparently someone managed to hack Dallas's emergency management system and uh, turn on every single tornado siren in Dallas on Saturday evening. Now, while this attack first may appear more as a prank than a serious attack, there was actually a quite serious side effect of this attack in that the confusion it caused did flood 911 operators with calls and there were substantial delays at times in answering 911 calls as a result of this attack. These type of systems have been known to be quite vulnerable for quite a while now, also emergency broadcast systems and and so it has been pointed out in the past that authentication alike isn't all that great for uh, these systems. At this point, it's too early to speculate about what exact exploit was used here or how this attack or who mounted it. Well, uh, the guess so far is that the attack came from a local source, which probably means that it was more intended as a not so sophisticated prank. And Shadow Broker, the organization that did try to sell a stash of stolen NSA hacking tools and already has released a number of interesting tools in the past, now made available the password for the final archive which held all the tools they were intending to to sell. So at this point, uh, these tools are known. I took a quick look at the files and really didn't have the time to adequately analyze them. A lot of them are only available in binary form as far as I can tell, which of course makes analysis a bit more complicated of uh, these uh, tools. There are a couple of scripts like shell scripts, Perl scripts and the like uh, that are available in the source code form. And and uh, took a quick look at them. A lot of them older tools, so nothing really all that exciting. A uh, lot of sort of post-exploitation tools like covert channels. Haven't really seen sort of a smoking gun yet, like a big uh, zero day. But like I said, I haven't had a chance uh, to do a detailed search on the tools or run a lot of them uh, to figure out what they actually are intended to do. Now, Tavis Ormandy already commented that uh, he found uh, one exploit in this leak for a vulnerability that he disclosed in 2009, but the file actually that was leaked was created a couple of years before uh, this particular vulnerability was originally announced and patched. And both McAfee and FireEye over the weekend somewhat independently released details about a Serity vulnerability in Microsoft Word that they have observed being exploited. In this case, the attacker is sending an RTF document with the .doc extension. So it looks like a Word document, opens in Word, but is then used in order to download an HTA document from a web server that is then executed. 
Due to this vulnerability, it is possible for an attacker to execute arbitrary code on systems running any version of Vert, including up to Vert 2016 on Windows 10. Nothing from Microsoft uh, so far as to whether or not this will be patched on Tuesday. FireEye and McAfee released these details because they already have seen this vulnerability being exploited. And with that, uh, just a little announcement about Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, which of course is coming up. Typically, we always uh, publish sort of a table or a summary of uh, the Microsoft Patch Tuesday. We'll have to change this around a little bit. We always uh, used to get uh, from Microsoft a heads up on what they were going to publish a few hours uh, before the actual patches were released. Now, Microsoft notified us a couple of weeks ago that they are discontinuing the program under which they did this type of pre-release, which of course makes it much more difficult for us to provide this overview. So we haven't quite decided yet uh, what we'll do on Tuesday, but most likely what I think we'll do is a brief summary, a diary about the patches that were released, and then maybe later in the day or whenever we are going to have the more detailed overview of which patches were released. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.